Here's a look at the Wacom Bamboo Spark. The whole idea of the Spark is that you use a pen, which you must use the pen supplied, and you can write on paper and it will automatically transfer the drawing to the cloud at the press of a button. Uh, and it does seem to work, it is good. Uh, what you get is you get the pen, which it just looks like an ordinary pen, but it is pressure sensitive. The tip does move slightly and you use that for all the drawing. You must use that pen. When you're done, you press the button and the button will then transfer the drawing from the paper to the cloud, the Wacom cloud. Uh, there's an on off switch at the bottom as well. And just now it's off that there's two lights, which I'll switch it on and show you the lights. There's lights that come on. There's orange and blue. Green means that it's just waiting for you to do something. And when I draw something, you'll see that that will turn blue. And then what it'll do is, it'll use Bluetooth. And it'll transfer it to a device that you've got set up. So it doesn't really use a computer, which is kind of different. So what I'll do is, um, in fact, one more thing is the pad of paper is just bog standard paper, which is good, so it's not special paper. The only thing that you really need to buy for it is that the, the actual refills for the pen must come from Wacom, but you get two spares with it, so that's good. So I'll do a quick drawing, I'll use some scrap bits of paper and I'll bring in the tablet and you can see how it works. Right, before you draw anything, you've also got to put the Bamboo Spark app onto a device, which is Bluetooth. So I've got it here on my tablet. It's blank. I haven't saved anything on it. Uh, you've got to sign up for the actual Wacom Cloud, which is this part of it. Um, you've got Enable Sync, and if you've got a mobile phone, you could synchronise over your data plan. Um, and the other part of it really is just that you've given it the name Bamboo Spark and some bits and pieces. If you wanted to do this in landscape then you can do device orientation and you can rotate to put it in the landscape just so that um, the actual spark knows that you're going to rotate it. So I'll put it back to just portrait mode again. Um, Pair bamboo spark, you do that at the start, you're really just holding down the button for a couple of seconds and off you go. So, let's give it a quick go. Right, just do a quick scribble, just so you can see it. You'll notice that the lights are green, haven't done anything yet. So that'll change as soon as I put pressure on the pen to draw something. So, you'll see it's went blue, so that means that I've got something that I need to transfer. So it lets you know that there is something that you need to do. So if I just do a silly little drawing. Okay, there we go. So that's done, but it's not transferred yet. So if I bring in the tablet, you get nothing. You must press the button. So you press the button, what it does now is it transfers it via Bluetooth to the device and then up into the cloud using the Wi-Fi. And there it is. So I'll bring it in a bit. So that's an exact copy of that. And you can obviously zoom in a bit there. Now, you can do a whole ton of other stuff as well because there's other ideas that say you wanted to add something, say you wanted to change something, then you can still do it. But you've kind of got to go around about way of doing it. You've got some options up here which are draw and split. 
idea is that you could, in theory, you could add to that if you wanted within the Spark app. Or you can split, as it says, that you have a button here to export. You can export images, PDFs and will format. The will format, I think, is made by Wacom or created by Wacom so that you can have that kind of vector style and have the timeline idea. So you can export this image and then once you've exported this image you get a whole bunch of options where you can share it to emails, Dropbox, that kind of thing. I think it does Evernote as well. Um, same idea with PDFs and the will format you would just save somewhere because you can import it later. So why would you want to split? Well, let's do another example because it could easily happen to you. So let's say, go for another sheet of paper. Let's say, I don't know, <clears throat> say you're doing, uh, you're taking notes or something. If you take your notes, right, and then you go to page two, and you take more notes. Right, the problem is, after page one, you didn't press the button. So now, those two pages are going to be in the one. So if I press the button, you think, oh crap, I've got two pages in the one. <clears throat> and you will have. You will have two pages in the one. As that. <clears throat> so you've got two pages in the one, but you need those to be two separate pages. You may have spent an hour and a half writing that. What you can do is come up and do split. Split gives you a wee timeline and you can run time back and forward. So you can say, okay, let's go back a bit, back a bit. And you can say, okay, Wait, that's page one. So what you can do is come up, split page. Now, if I go back, I've got the two separate pages. So even if you screw it up, you can still split the pages. Um, if you wanted to, you can go further and if I go back to this little guy, I could then say I want to split him because I don't know, we'll say I screwed up the body. Just keep the head. And I can split. And I'll move two pages, one with the head, one with the body. If I wanted to, I could then say, well, I will draw. And if you wanted to, you can draw the rest straight on here. Blah, blah, blah. Looks incredibly bizarre, but there you go. But okay that but if I wanted to I can still split that again I can still say no that looks ridiculous and it does look ridiculous so we'll go back to split page and that will take away the body which I can then just delete because I don't want delete there we go the original body is still there so what you can do is do select, pick the body, pick the head, then come up and combine. So now it's back to where it started with the head and body. So it's good like that that you can, you know, go back in time, stop, split, rejoin, all that kind of stuff. That's good. Um, if, say, you don't have your device with you, what you can do is you can go in and you can go, this is just a shortcut, this is this is a browser, this is what you could do on your computer. You could be sitting in front of your desktop and you could say, well, I need that drawing that I just did. Or you've done it last week or whatever. And on your desktop machine you can go in and you can get your picture. If you want, you can download it. Here you can do downloads, exports. You can rename it and stuff like that. You can move it. Um, if you want, you can move it. 
and you can move it to the bamboo paper app. The only thing is you've got to move it to the bamboo paper app. I would rather do a copy so I've still got the original in Spark but I don't think you can do it that way. So you can still you get it even off the web you can still get them. Again if you want you can you know delete your stuff you know delete that so you can delete your pages and so on even though you know you're at your desktop rather than in front of your tablet or whatever so the only as I say the only downside is it would be nice for an easy way to put it into paper but then it doesn't really have to go into paper anyway so personally I would just keep the drawing in bamboo spark because having played about with bamboo paper once it's in bamboo paper it can't go back to spark so that's something to keep an eye on uh, the only other thing you got to watch out for is as I've just done here with using a sheet of paper is that if a loose sheet of paper like this if you draw something there and then the sheet of paper moves then it's going to cause problems if you stop, start, stop, start. Because just because a piece of paper has moved, it's out of alignment and you'll have problems. Uh, been seen, done. Um, I think that's about it for the Bamboo Spark. Uh, it is good. It's got pressure sensitivity, but the very lightest of lines won't show up. But it is still good for the fact that you're just using what looks like an ordinary pen. So, yep, definitely thumbs up to Wacom for that. It's good, it's easy, it saves you scanning stuff, because I'm always drawing stuff and then having to scan it and then colour it. Whereas now I can just draw it here and go straight to the computer, get it and colour it. So it cuts out a whole step, which is good. So yeah, comes highly recommended.